Hi everybody, and welcome to Rapid Immersion, where we discuss questions and topic areas within your digital marketing ecosystem. In this episode, we pick up where we left off last time on our video, SEO Basics, Why Do Links Matter for SEO? So if you haven't yet seen that, you'll find a link to it on this page if you want to check it out. Now we finished off last time by talking about how modern SEO practitioners are tasked with identifying and then earning the links that matter the most. But what are these links that matter the most from an SEO perspective? What do search engines consider to be a quality link with strong SEO value? And what links do they want to ignore? So these questions bring us to today's title, SEO Basics, How to Define a Quality Link. So as a quick intro, there are a few things you should know up front. First of all, assessing link quality is a hefty and technical topic. There's a lot to talk about, so we're going to scratch the surface and hopefully give you enough to guide your further research. Fortunately, common sense definitely applies, so we'll focus this video on getting the most from it. Second, if you're wondering how to check the links to your site or to a competitor site, head on over to Google and do a search for Majestic SEO. You can register for a free account that will enable you to do this. And third, the items I'm going to talk about today represent my opinion, which I'm going to base on individual experience, observation, and what I think are SEO industry best practices. So please know that this isn't actually acknowledged by the search engines who are more secretive about how their algorithms work. Okay, so let's jump in. Imagine you're reviewing a page that's ranking really well for a competitive keyword in your industry. You've just downloaded a list of the 20 links that point to this page and are thinking, which of these 20 links is likely to be giving this page its ranking power? Which are the most valuable? Perhaps you'd like to know this to guide your own link acquisition efforts, or maybe this is a page on your site that's suddenly attracting lots of visitors through organic search, and you would like to understand why so you can replicate that. And we mentioned earlier that link evaluation was a hefty and technical topic, and it is, but fortunately, the main ideas can be simplified into three categories. Let's call them the three pillars. Keeping these pillars in mind provides a practical framework that will help the rest of the details naturally fall into place. So in order of importance, the three pillars for evaluating link quality from an SEO perspective are number one, credibility, number two, topical relevance, and number three, merit. The ideal SEO link will satisfy the criteria of each pillar, so it will be credible, be topically relevant, and be awarded based on merit. As you review each link, you'll know which questions to ask, which we're going to talk about in a second, to gain an understanding of the SEO value being passed. Fortunately, again, there's lots of common sense involved. So starting with the first pillar, credibility. To assess credibility, you're going to look at the website that's linking to you and ask yourself the following questions. Is this website an important and trustworthy resource online? Or put another way, would you feel comfortable recommending this site to a friend or a relative? Question two, who is responsible for publishing the information on this site? And is it a person or a team of people who are recognized for their expertise in the space? And the third. How long has this website been around? Is it brand new or does it have an established history? If you can answer that the website linking to you is recognized, it's a trusted resource with content that's being produced by experts who are recognized in the field, then congratulations, you have a credible link that's very likely to have high SEO value. Okay, so let's move on to the second pillar, topical relevance. Now, when a search engine visits a page, it examines the words that are used and picks out certain terms and phrases called keywords to classify and organize that page by topic. Now, by crawling the web at length, search engines like Google have evolved to become very good at identifying which topics are related to each other and which ones aren't. So a link between two pages on topics that Google recognizes as being relevant to each other is going to be more powerful, generally speaking, from an SEO perspective than two pages that are about totally different ideas. So what questions should you ask when evaluating links with pillar two, topical relevance, in mind? So looking at the web pages that are linking, ask what is the topic of the page where your link appears and the domain, and how relevant is that to you? And what is the text that surrounds the link? So the presence of nearby keywords would be a positive signal if those keywords are relevant. Third, what is the clickable text to the link? 
So search engines use the clickable text called anchor text as a strong signal about the subject of the page. Now, onto the third pillar, merit. Search engines prioritize links that it considers to be placed for the person, the user, who is reading the page. The types of links that are editorially awarded. These links are perceived to be the most genuine and are therefore more reliable for a search engine to use when calculating rankings. Now on the flip side, links that are not based on merit should be reduced in ranking power as that could negatively impact the quality of the search results. Questions to ask about assessing pillar three, merit, include, why does this link exist? What motivated its placement? This is where you want to assess whether the link was awarded based on the value to the user or some other authentic reason or not. Next, does this link appear to be part of a paid exchange, such as would be the case of a website purchasing a placement for a monthly fee? If the link were clearly part of a paid, paid exchange, the search engine would want to dilute the SEO value as the endorsement is not awarded on the quality of the page, but rather on the money changing hands. So when a paid relationship is in place, search engines ask for a speci specialty tag to be placed in the HTML of that link, which is called the nofollow tag. So as you can imagine, determining whether a link is part of a paid relationship or not is a tricky undertaking for a search engine um, and a subject of much debate in the SEO community. Several websites have landed in deep trouble by overtly purchasing links intended to manipulate their rankings and then getting caught for it. So last question, is the link being mentioned in a positive or negative light? Now, the intent of the link is a vital data point. If a website is receiving links because it's a valuable resource, then the search engine would want to reward that. But if a website is linked to because it's the worst in its space and the people who are linking to it are telling you stay away from them, they're dodgy, the, link, the search engine would also want to be able to interpret that too. Now, this was actually a big problem in the earlier days of the web, as some websites attracted negative attention that the search engines would then use to rank those websites very highly, which is terrible for users. So that about brings us to the end of this episode. I hope the three pillars of link evaluation, credibility, topical relevance, and merit help you more easily assess which links are the most helpful for all of your SEO endeavors, and that this information can guide your link building efforts in the future. By targeting and attracting the links that fulfill the criteria of these pillars, you'll be building a foundation that will benefit both your rankings and your wider online marketing efforts for the longer term. So thank you very much for your time and all the best for now. Cheers.